In the heart of a dense, fog-laden forest stood the remnants of an old, abandoned manor, its history shrouded in tragedy and whispered tales of horror. Locals avoided the path leading to its decrepit gates, and the air around it seemed to throng with the echoes of its dark past. The house had been the site of a gruesome family massacre decades ago, where every member was found lifeless, their expressions twisted in terror, but no perpetrator was ever identified. One evening, a group of thrill-seeking teenagers, drawn by the allure of the manor's macabre history, decided to explore it. As they pushed through the creaking front doors, the house groaned as if awakening from a deep slumber. Ignoring the chilling ambience and the warning signs of danger, they ventured deeper into the mansion's decaying embrace. They found themselves in a grand, dust-choked hall adorned with faded portraits whose eyes seemed to follow their every move. The air was thick with silence, save for the occasional floorboard groan beneath their feet. As they delved further, they stumbled upon a locked door in the basement, its surface cold and unwelcoming. Overcome by curiosity and the bravado of youth, they managed to force the door open. Beyond lay a dimly lit room filled with old, leather-bound journals, their pages yellowed with age. The writings revealed the tortured mind of the manor's last owner, who spoke of being haunted by visions of his deceased family members, pleading and accusing him simultaneously. As night deepened, strange occurrences began to unfold. Objects moved inexplicably, chilling whispers filled the air, and the temperature dropped to a bone-chilling cold. The group, now gripped by fear, realized too late that the manor was not as abandoned as they had believed. Their exploration turned into a nightmare as they encountered spectral figures, whose appearances mirrored the portraits in the hall. The spirits, angry and vengeful, seemed to be reenacting the night of the massacre, leading the teenagers through a macabre dance of death and madness. In their frantic escape, one of them stumbled upon a hidden room containing a horrifying scene, a tableau of mannequins arranged in a grotesque imitation of a family dinner, with one seat eerily empty, as if waiting for someone to join the eternal gathering. The realization dawned on them that the manor was reliving its tragic past, and they were now part of its sinister narrative. As they raced to escape, the boundary between the living and the dead blurred, trapping them in a cycle of horror that mirrored the manor's own perpetual torment. The story abruptly ends as they reach the manor's threshold, the outside world seemingly within reach, but an overwhelming sense of dread suggests that escaping the mansion's grasp might not be as simple as stepping through its doors. As the teenagers neared the threshold of the manor, a thunderous clamor erupted behind them, the house shuddering as if in the throes of an enraged beast. The door, once seemingly an escape route, now appeared as a mocking portal to a maze of terror they couldn't flee. Each step they took towards freedom paradoxically dragged them deeper into the manor's clutches, the architecture morphing unnaturally, hallways elongating and rooms shifting in a disorienting dance. They found themselves separated, isolated in different parts of the manor, their screams for each other swallowed by the oppressive silence. One of the teenagers, Alex, stumbled into a library filled with ancient tomes, where whispered voices beckoned him to uncover hidden truths. The books seemed alive, their pages fluttering to passages detailing rituals and dark pacts that hinted at the manor's malevolent sentience. Meanwhile, Emily, another member of the group, wandered into a grand ballroom, its decayed opulence bathed in an eerie, spectral light. Ghostly figures danced in an endless waltz, their hollow eyes fixed on her, inviting her to join their never-ending revelry. As she backed away, the music grew frenzied, and the dancers' movements became more desperate, mirroring the tragedy that had befallen the manor's original inhabitants. In a distant wing, Michael found himself in what appeared to be a child's nursery. Toys of a bygone era lay scattered, and a rocking horse moved gently of its own accord. A chilling giggle echoed, and shadowy figures darted in the periphery of his vision, playing hide-and-seek with an unseen spectre. The room felt alive with the memories of the children who once played there, their joy overshadowed by the darkness of their untimely deaths. Back in the main hall, Sarah, the last of the group, noticed the portrait's eyes now wept tears of blood, their expressions contorted in agony. 
The mana's history unfolded before her in violent flashes, a lineage cursed by greed and betrayal, a legacy of death that tainted its very foundations. The separate experiences of the teenagers began to weave together, revealing the mana's true horror. It was a sentient entity, fed by the tragedies of its past inhabitants and energized by the fear of those who dared to trespass its cursed halls. The manor was not just a setting for the massacre, it was its architect, manipulating its residents and visitors alike to recreate its dark history. As the night waned, the boundaries between past and present dissolved, and the teenagers found themselves participants in the manor's history, each playing a role in the reenactment of its tragic past. The realization struck them with chilling clarity, they were not just in a haunted house, they were part of its haunting, integral to the story it perpetually relived. In a desperate bid to break the cycle, they sought to reunite and uncover the heart of the manor's curse, hoping to find a way to sever the ties that bound them to its fate. Their journey through the shifting, treacherous corridors of the manor became a race against time, as dawn's first light promised either salvation or doom, the nature of which remained uncertain in the manor's twisted reality. In the dim light of the encroaching dawn, the teenagers' efforts to reconvene became a harrowing odyssey through the manor's morphing halls. Each corridor seemed to stretch into infinity, each room a puzzle box of eerie, cryptic clues about the manor's sordid past and its spectral inhabitants. Alex, in the library, deciphered a passage in an ancient grimoire revealing the origin of the manor's curse, a pact made with a malevolent entity seeking perpetual torment for those within its walls. The text suggested that the curse could be broken by reenacting the ritual that birthed it, yet the critical components of the ceremony were maddeningly vague, hidden in riddles and arcane symbols that seemed to shift and change even as he studied them. Meanwhile, Emily, trapped in the ballroom, discovered a grand piano playing itself, the music not just a melody but a sonic key to the manor's memory. Each note resonated with the structure, causing it to momentarily reveal pathways and hidden rooms, offering her glimpses of the manor's dark heart. She realized the music was a map, guiding her through the manor's labyrinthine interior toward a central chamber pulsing with a dark energy. Michael, in the nursery, encountered the spirits of the children, who were not malevolent but trapped souls yearning for release. They communicated through childish drawings, showing him the history of the manor through innocent yet hauntingly distorted imagery. These drawings highlighted a specific area of the manor's grounds, an old, gnarled tree that seemed to be a nexus of spectral activity, its roots possibly entwined with the source of the curse. Sarah, navigating the main hall, discovered a series of mechanical contraptions and optical illusions that, when aligned correctly, projected a holographic blueprint of the manor. This blueprint revealed a hidden underground chamber directly beneath the gnarled tree Michael was drawn to, suggesting a physical and spiritual connection central to the manor's haunting. As they pieced together the clues, a coherent picture began to form. The manor itself was a carefully designed trap, a puzzle box made to ensnare the living and the dead alike. The ritual to break the curse required them to be at specific locations within the house, performing tasks that mirrored the original events leading to the curse's creation. Determined to end the nightmare, the teenagers set out to align themselves with the manor's dark past, each taking their place in the ritual's recreation. As they prepared to enact their parts, the manor seemed to anticipate their intentions, its ambience turning increasingly hostile. Walls bled shadows, statues wept blood, and the air thronged with a palpable dread. Just as they began the ritual, the entity bound to the manor manifested, a formless darkness coalescing into a figure both terrifying and pitiful, a twisted soul condemned to relive its agony. This entity, the source of the curse, confronted them, its presence a suffocating miasma of despair and rage. As they stood on the brink of either lifting the curse or succumbing to the manor's dark history, the line between the living and the spectral blurred, casting them into a realm where time folded upon itself, and the past's horrors bled into the present, setting the stage for a confrontation with the very heart of the manor's darkness. In this shadowed realm where past and present intertwined, the teenagers faced the entity, its form a swirling mass of anguish and malice. 
The manor, alive with the entity's power, contorted around them, its architecture an ever-changing maze of horror. The air was thick with whispers of the dead, recounting the entity's tragic origin, a tale of betrayal, murder, and a curse born from vengeful fury. Alex, armed with knowledge from the ancient grimoire, directed the others in the ritual, each step mirrored against the entity's untortured history. They needed to retrace the events leading to the curse, to offer the entity a semblance of the peace it never had. As they proceeded, the manor spectral inhabitants, bound to the entity's fate, materialized not as foes but as guides, their actions hinting at the ritual's correct path. Emily, at the piano in the ballroom, played the haunting melody that echoed the entity's sorrow, the notes cutting through the dense malaise, guiding her friends through the manor's shifting geography. The music became a beacon, its melody a thread leading through the darkness, helping the group navigate towards the underground chamber beneath the gnarled tree. Michael, with the ghostly children, discovered that their innocent play was the key to unlocking the manor's time-warped secrets. Each game revealed patterns that mirrored the ritual steps, guiding him to reunite with the others, his path lit by the ephemeral glow of childlike spirits. Sarah, deciphering the holographic blueprint, found mechanisms hidden within the manor's walls that, when activated, opened secret passageways and revealed the true extent of the underground chamber. Her journey unveiled the manor's heart, a nexus where all its pain and darkness converged. As they converged at the gnarled tree, the underground chamber revealed itself, a vast space where the roots of the tree penetrated the darkness, pulsing with the curse's life force. The entity, now manifesting more clearly, revealed its true form, a tormented soul, trapped in a cycle of its own making, its appearance a grotesque mirror of its inner turmoil. The teenagers, realizing the entity was not just the source but also a victim of the curse, shifted their strategy from confrontation to liberation. They worked to complete the ritual, not to banish the entity, but to free it from its eternal torment, believing this would break the cycle and release the manor from its haunted state. As they each took their positions in the chamber, performing tasks that symbolically mirrored the manor's tragic events, the air shimmered with ethereal light, the roots of the tree glowing with otherworldly energy. The mana trembled, not in malice, but as if in anticipation of release from its long suffering. The ritual neared its climax, with the teenagers and the entity locked in a dance of fate, each action unraveling the tangled threads of the curse. The boundary between the material and the spectral grew ever thinner, the mana's history replaying around them in vivid, spectral reenactments. In this charged atmosphere, where every heartbeat echoed the manor's pain, the teenagers continued the ritual, their actions becoming part of the manor's story, weaving new outcomes into its tapestry of tragedy. As the narrative of the past was rewritten, the future of both the living and the dead hung in the balance, the outcome poised to either end the curse or bind them all to the manor forever. In the depths of the underground chamber, as the ritual progressed, the air vibrated with the power of unspoken words and suppressed cries. The manor's walls, now translucent, pulsed with the light of a hundred souls, their faces pressed against the surface, eyes filled with hope and despair. The entity, its form stabilizing, became a poignant figure of tragedy, its features reflecting every soul it had consumed in its agony. It hovered over the ritual, its essence intertwined with the gnarled tree's roots, which writhed like serpents, seeking solace or perhaps redemption. Alex, his voice steady, recited incantations from the grimoire, his words cutting through the supernatural fog, each syllable a beacon for the trapped souls. The ancient text revealed its final secret, the ritual was not just to free the entity but also to restore balance, to offer forgiveness where there was none and to heal wounds that time had forgotten. Emily's music, now a symphony of sorrow and hope, resonated through the chamber, intertwining with Alex's incantations, creating a harmony that seemed to suit the entity's tortured spirit. The melodies weaved through the roots, illuminating them with a soft, golden light, unraveling the darkness that had been woven into the manor's very foundation. Michael, surrounded by the ghostly children, led them in a procession, 
their innocent laughter and joyful play infusing the chamber with a purity long lost. The children, in their spectral form, touched the roots, their presence acting as a bond to the entity's pain, their laughter a counterpoint to the centuries of screams and lamentations. Sarah, manipulating the holographic blueprint, found levers and switches hidden within the chamber, each activation syncing with the ritual's rhythm, revealing hidden alcoves where the personal effects of the manor's past inhabitants were stored. These relics, imbued with their owner's life force, began to glow, casting light upon the entity's shadow, revealing the human behind the horror. As the ritual reached its zenith, the chamber throbbed with a life force of its own, the tree's roots now glowing with ethereal energy, pulsating in rhythm with the hearts of those present. The entity, caught in the ritual's embrace, began to shed its malice, layer by layer, revealing the tormented soul beneath. The teenagers, now contents of the ritual's power, felt the weight of centuries lift, as if the manor itself was exhaling, releasing its pent-up anguish. The spirits of the manor, from the spectral dancers in the ballroom to the playful children in the nursery, converged on the chamber, their forms shimmering with light, drawn to the ritual-like moths to a flame. As these spirits entered the chamber, they melded with the entity, their combined energies sparking a transformation. The entity's form, once a maelstrom of darkness, began to fragment, its outline dissolving into a cascade of luminous particles, each spark a release of its bound souls, freed from the cycle of torment. The chamber, now a crucible of rebirth and release, echoed with the combined voices of the living and the dead, a chorus of liberation that resonated through the manor's very foundation. The walls of the manor, once oppressive barriers, now shimmered with transparency, revealing the breaking dawn outside, its light a promise of a new beginning. As the entity's form dissipated, the curse that held the manor in its grip for centuries began to unravel, the oppressive atmosphere lifting, replaced by a serene calm. The teenagers, exhausted yet exhilarated, stood at the heart of the chamber, witnessing the culmination of their journey, not just as spectators, but as key players in the manor's history. The ritual's completion neared, with the manor's fate and that of its spectral inhabitants hanging in the balance, the dawn's light creeping into the chamber signifying the closing of an age-long chapter and the beginning of something new, yet the final act of this spectral drama remained unwritten, poised on the cusp of revelation. As the dawn's light filtered into the chamber, casting long shadows and illuminating the faces of the teenagers with a soft, golden glow, the atmosphere inside the manor shifted. The oppressive dread that had saturated the air was dissipating, replaced by a sense of tranquility and closure. The manor, recognizing the sacrifice and courage of the teenagers, seemed to be shedding its haunted legacy, layer by layer. The entity, now a mere whisper of its former self, hovered at the edge of existence, its form flickering like a candle in the wind. Its eyes, clear for the first time in centuries, locked onto the teenagers, conveying a silent gratitude and sorrow, acknowledging its tumultuous past and the peace it was finally being granted. The roots of the gnarled tree, once conduits of the curse, now shimmered with a radiant energy, intertwining with the spectral figures, guiding them towards the afterlife. Each spirit, embracing this transformation, passed through the teenagers, leaving behind a trail of luminescent echoes, memories of their lives and deaths, imparting wisdom and warnings, blessings, and farewells. Alex, feeling the grimoire's power wane, realized the book was not just a tool for the ritual but a repository of the manor's consciousness, its pages a living testament to the history it had witnessed. As the ritual concluded, the grimoire's pages turned blank, its purpose fulfilled, its legacy transferred to those who had braved its secrets. Emily's piano, silent now, stood as a monument to the night's ordeal, its keys glistening with the residual energy of the played melody, a haunting tune that would resonate in the memories of those who heard it, a lullaby of redemption and release. Michael, surrounded by the dissipating forms of the ghostly children, felt a poignant loss, as if he was parting from long-lost friends. Their laughter, now a distant echo, left a promise in the air, a reminder of the innocence and joy that once pervaded the manor before it became a mausoleum of despair. Sarah, watching the holographic blueprint fade, 
understood that the manor's secrets were not meant to be contained or controlled, but understood and respected. The blueprint, like the grimoire, vanished, signifying the end of the manor's curse and the beginning of its new legacy as a place of peace and remembrance. As the sun rose, casting its light over the manor, the building itself seemed to sigh with relief, its walls no longer prison bars but the protective boundaries of a sanctified place. The manor, liberated from its centuries-old torment, stood as a beacon of hope and a testament to the power of understanding and confronting the past. The teenagers, their roles as inadvertent saviors completed, found themselves at a crossroads, forever changed by the night's events. The manor's grounds, once a labyrinth of fear and mystery, now welcomed them as heroes of a silent battle, fought not with weapons but with bravery, empathy, and a desire to right the wrongs of history. As they prepared to leave the manor, the sun fully revealing the path home, they felt the weight of their experience, a mix of triumph and melancholy. The manor, a silent sentinel behind them, stood not as a haunted house but as a house that had been haunted, its spirits now at rest, its secrets unveiled. The teenagers, stepping into the light of the new day, carried with them the legacy of the manor, a reminder that sometimes, the most frightening horrors are not those that lurk in the shadows, but those that dwell in the hearts of men, waiting to be faced, understood, and ultimately, forgiven. As the teenagers walked away from the manor, the early morning mist began to lift, revealing the true magnificence of the estate, its beauty long obscured by the veil of terror that had enshrouded it. The manor, now serene and almost welcoming, stood as a monument to their harrowing journey, its walls whispering tales of redemption and renewal. But as they reached the edge of the property, a subtle shift occurred. The air shimmered, hinting at unseen forces still at play. The ground beneath their feet trembled lightly, a gentle reminder that while the immediate curse was lifted, the manor's story was far from over. The entity, though pacified, had been a guardian of secrets darker and deeper than any of them could fathom. Behind them, the manor seemed to watch, its windows like eyes, reflecting the breaking dawn yet hinting at depths unexplored. In the light, shadows moved, suggesting that not all spirits had been freed, some, perhaps, chose to stay, bound by love, duty, or unfinished business. Alex, clutching the now blank grimoire, felt a residual pulse emanating from its pages, as if the book still harbored a final message or a key to further mysteries. The ancient tome, its role in the night's events undeniable, seemed to be waiting for the right moment to reveal its last secrets. Emily, haunted by the melodies she played, sensed an unfinished symphony, notes hanging in the air, on some verses of the manor's history that beckoned her to delve deeper into its musical legacy. The piano's silent keys were a reminder that some tunes were yet to be played, their harmonies capable of unlocking yet more of the manor's enigmas. Michael, feeling the loss of the childlike spirits, realized that their playful guidance had been more than mere assistance, it was an invitation to uncover the layers of innocence and tragedy that the manor had witnessed, stories of lives cut short and dreams unfulfilled. Sarah, pondering the vanishing blueprint, understood that the manor was not just a structure but a living archive of every soul that had passed through its doors. The fading lines of the hologram hinted at narratives yet to be discovered, parts within the manor that led to hidden truths and buried tales waiting to be told. As they paused, contemplating the journey back to their normal lives, a mutual realization dawned upon them, their adventure within the manor had changed them, imbuing them with a sense of purpose and a hunger for truth. The legacy of the manor was now intertwined with their own destinies, a chapter in their lives that was far from concluded. Compelled by an unspoken agreement, they turned back to face the manor, understanding that their night of horror was merely the prologue to a much larger story. The manor, with its newly awakened presence, seemed to beckon them, inviting them to unravel the tapestry of its past and to explore the depths of its haunted heart. With a mixture of trepidation and resolve, they approached the manor once more, stepping into the embrace of its shadowed halls, their footsteps echoing in the silence. The journey ahead promised to reveal the secrets of the manor's ancient legacy, its walls ready to divulge tales of sorrow, joy, betrayal, and love, 
each room a chapter, each corridor a narrative thread leading to the heart of the manor's untold history. Stepping back into the manor, the air around them thickened, charged with the unspoken words of the past. The once menacing silence was now filled with the soft whisper of the house, inviting them to delve deeper into its enigmatic heart. The manor, reborn through the night's ritual, held layers of history yet to be peeled back, each room a vault of secrets, every artifact a silent witness to the estate's storied past. The teenagers, now the manor's chosen, felt the weight of their newfound responsibility. The manor, in its silent, stately manner, seemed to acknowledge their return, doors opening as if in welcome, the previously hostile shadows now playing at their feet, guiding them onward. As they traversed the grand hall, they noticed changes subtle yet profound. Portraits on the walls, once grim and sorrowful, now bore expressions of serene acceptance, their eyes following the group not with malice but with an almost parental concern. The blood tears were gone, replaced by a soft glow that emanated from each frame, illuminating the path forward. Alex, drawn to a hidden alcove revealed by the shifting walls, found a series of letters and diaries dating back centuries, their pages filled with the personal accounts of the manor's former inhabitants. These writings spoke of love, loss, and betrayal, but also of redemption and hope, offering clues to the deeper, more complex narrative of the manor and its legacy. Emily, led by an unseen force, discovered a secluded chamber housing an ancient organ. Its keys, unlike the pianos, beckoned her to play, producing sounds that vibrated with the essence of the house, unlocking memories trapped in the very stone and wood, revealing hidden passageways and secret rooms that whispered of lost treasures and forgotten tragedies. Michael, following the faint laughter of the spectral children, was guided to the manor's old nursery. There, amidst the remnants of play and innocence, he found a series of intricate murals depicting the manor's history from its inception, each painting alive with scenes that moved and changed, showing the estate through the eyes of its youngest occupants. Sarah, her curiosity piqued by the architectural anomalies of the house, explored the structural heart of the manor, discovering an ancient foundation stone in the cellar. Engraved with cryptic symbols and languages long forgotten, the stone pulsed with a gentle power, suggesting it was the key to the manor's birth and possibly its ultimate salvation. As they each explored their discoveries, they realized that the manor was not just a place of haunting and horror but also a repository of wisdom and history, a custodian of stories that transcended time and death. The manor, through its trials and tribulations, had become a living chronicle of the human condition, capturing the essence of both the darkness and light found within the soul. The deeper they delved into the manor's secrets, the more they understood the entity's initial wrath and subsequent liberation. It was a reflection of the manor's own journey from a place of suffering and fear to one of understanding and peace. But the path to fully unlocking the manor's mysteries was fraught with challenges, as shadows of the past lingered, protective of their secrets and wary of the living. As the day waned, the manor seemed to settle around them, its many voices the creak of wood, the sigh of the wind, the murmur of the walls converging into a silent yet eloquent narrative. The teenagers, standing in the heart of the grand hall, felt a profound connection to the manor, their fates intertwined with its own, their story a new layer in its ancient tapestry. Ready to embrace the journey ahead, they prepared to explore the unseen depths of the manor, to confront the remnants of its dark past, and to unearth the truths buried within its walls. The manor, once a prison of horrors, now offered itself as a crucible of revelation, promising to reveal the secrets of a bygone era and the legacy of those who walked its halls, a story unfolding with each step they took into the unknown. As the evening shadows lengthened, casting the manor in a twilight embrace, the teenager's exploration took on a new urgency. The house, alive with the whispers of its past inhabitants, seemed eager to divulge its hidden lore, each room and corridor leading them deeper into the heart of its history. In the library, Alex uncovered a secret compartment within the fireplace mantle, revealing a collection of ancient artifacts, amulets, talismans, and other esoteric items, each linked to the manor's legacy and its battles with forces both terrestrial and supernatural. 
These objects resonated with a power that suggested they were not merely ceremonial, but had been integral to the rituals and protections of the estate. Emily, drawn by an inexplicable melody, found herself in a conservatory where a grand harp stood, its strings shimmering in the fading light. As she plucked the strings, the sound resonated through the manor, unlocking further secrets. Visions of the past, happy and horrific, played out in the room, showing the manor in different eras, revealing the joys and tragedies that had unfolded within its walls. Michael, following the playful spirits of the children, discovered a series of hidden passages that led to a sunken garden, overgrown yet beautiful. In its center lay a statue of an angel, weeping into a fountain whose waters flowed with a luminous quality. The garden, seemingly forgotten by time, held the memories of the manor's former glory and the key to understanding the cyclical nature of its history. Sarah, delving into the architectural heart of the manor, found blueprints that detailed not just the physical structure but also metaphysical designs, suggesting that the manor was built not just as a home but as a sanctuary against unseen dark forces. The plans indicated a network of ley lines and energy vortices converging beneath the manor, hinting at the source of its power and its curse. As night fell, the manor seemed to come alive with a different energy, more inviting yet no less mysterious. The air thronged with the power of untold stories, and the walls echoed with the laughter and cries of generations. The teenagers, now deeply entwined with the manor's fate, felt a shift in their perception, as if the house itself was revealing its true nature to them, not as intruders but as inheritors of its legacy. Exploring further, they encountered rooms that defied the laws of time and space, containing objects that flickered between eras, phasing in and out of reality. Portraits on the walls changed, depicting the manor's inhabitants in various epochs, each painting a clue to the puzzles that lay within the fabric of the house. The night deepened, and the manor's interior grew more labyrinthine, its corridors and staircases leading to impossible geometries and doors that opened onto distant lands and times. The teenagers realized that the manor was not just a repository of history but a nexus of timelines, a meeting point for different realities, each connected to the manor's heart. As they navigated this complex tapestry of time and space, the manor presented them with challenges and puzzles, each solution bringing them closer to understanding the true extent of its power and the origins of its haunting. The spirits of the house, once tormented and restless, now aided their journey, offering guidance and protection as they delved into the deeper, more arcane mysteries of the estate. With each step, they uncovered more about the manor's role in the cosmic balance, its walls a barrier against chaos and darkness, its foundation a bastion of light and knowledge. The teenagers, in their quest, were not just uncovering the past but becoming part of the manor's ongoing story, their actions echoing in its halls, shaping its future. The journey through the manor became a journey through history itself, each room a chapter, each artifact a key to understanding the broader narrative of the world's hidden lore. The manor, with its twisting corridors and endless mysteries, beckoned them deeper, promising answers and wonders, its secrets unfolding like a dark flower in the moonlight, revealing the heart of its eternal mystery. As dawn broke on the horizon, casting a pale light through the manor's expansive windows, the teenagers gathered in the main hall, their night of exploration revealing the true essence of the estate. The manor, once a nexus of terror and despair, had transformed into a beacon of understanding and reconciliation. They stood together, united by their journey through the labyrinthine corridors of history and mystery, their eyes reflecting the wisdom and burdens of their newfound knowledge. The entity, now a benign presence, materialized before them, its form no longer menacing but serene, a guardian spirit of the manor. In a voice that resonated with the sorrow and joy of centuries, it spoke of the manor's role as a keeper of balance between the mortal realm and the ethereal, its foundation steeped in the duty to guard against the darkness that lurked beyond the veil of reality. The teenagers, through their trials, had not only unraveled the manor's haunted past but had also fortified its barriers against the encroaching shadows, renewing its strength as a sentinel against chaos. 
the entity, expressing gratitude, bestowed upon them blessings of protection and wisdom, acknowledging that their fates were forever intertwined with the manor's legacy. As the entity faded into the morning light, the manor settled into a peaceful silence, its halls and rooms basking in the glow of redemption. The teenagers, their mission complete, felt a profound connection to the house, no longer as intruders but as custodians of its secrets and defenders of its purpose. With the first rays of sunlight piercing through the darkness, the manor's appearance transformed. The once foreboding structure now stood majestic and inviting, its architecture a testament to the enduring strength of light over darkness. The spirits of the manor, freed from their eternal torment, appeared one last time, not as haunting spectres but as grateful souls, passing into the afterlife with smiles of relief and peace. The teenagers stepped outside, the manor's grounds vibrant with life, the air filled with the scent of blooming flowers and the chorus of the morning birds. The haunting melodies and whispers of the night had given way to a harmonious symphony of nature and tranquility. As they walked away, the manor behind them stood not as a place of horror but as a symbol of courage, understanding, and the eternal battle between darkness and light. They realized that their adventure was more than a ghostly encounter, it was a journey of self-discovery, a test of bravery, and a lesson in the power of empathy and resolve. The sun climbed higher, casting away the last shadows of the night, and the teenagers, changed forever by their experience, knew that the manor would always be a part of them, a chapter in their lives where they faced the unknown and emerged victorious. They walked into the daylight, not as mere survivors of a haunted night but as enlightened guardians of a deep and powerful truth, ready to face the world with new eyes, where every shadow held a story, and every light a lesson. And so, the manor stood in silent vigil, its legacy of horror replaced by a legacy of heroism and hope, a beacon for those who dare to confront the darkness and uncover the light within. The story of the manor and the brave souls who uncovered its truths would be whispered through the ages, a tale of terror turned triumph, a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit.